Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir. Nous allons witness, David Chandler. poursuivre notre discussion. Like Chandler, Chandler, à présent donner la parole au Conseil de la Défense. Je vous en prie. Maître Garcia, bonjour, merci, Monsieur le Président. Good afternoon, dear Honor. Good afternoon, bonjour, mesdames ladies et messieurs. And gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs les juges. Mr. Professor, I would like you Monsieur Chandler, to confirm regarding the statement you made this morning that uh, I was not sure vous avez ce matin. of the statement Je ne suis pas certain regarding the autonomous S21 institution de this morning the professor said there were various elements to constitute the autonomous institutions I understood most of them except three. For example, one, the professor said the documents, including the report, had to be sent to the upper echelon, and that that's part of the autonomous activity. That's it means other prisoners had to send their reports to the lower level because they were not autonomous. The second point, other prisoners um, were not led or supervised by top par leaders like Son Sen. Que, uh, and this des éléments, made me to uh, wonder pas, pas in the southwest zone, Tamok led the forces there and he supervised the prisoner, the prison there. And he was the fourth person in the party, whereas Son Sen was the seventh person in the party. In the east, Sardium controls the forces and also supervised the prison there. Additionally, the document with designate the people who have the authority to smash inside and outside the party. But I noticed that in the independent zone, decision had to be made by the standing committee. And who are they? That would be Pol Pot. So the question is, for the independent zone, did the standing party supervise and control the prisons? And another element, that is, you said S21 was an autonomous institution. It had telephones, it had typewriters, whereas other prisoners did not have all these facilities. What about the prisons in the independent zone, which was supervised by Pol Pot, did those prisons have telephones, have typewriters? So I am still not sure on all these three points. Would you be able to assist me? Thank you. Bien compris ces trois points que vous avez décrits ce matin. Pourriez-vous m'apporter votre concours? Well, I'll do the um, easy answer first. I didn't do any research on the prisons in the independent zone. My book was about S21. Uh, so I don't know uh, what sort of facilities these prisons or this prison had. Uh, I haven't seen anywhere that uh, people, other people know that uh, uh, also. I think uh, the, in the southwest, Tamok had uh, more autonomy than the leaders of the other zones. He was a very powerful person. 
in number three, as you say, in the uh, hierarchy, and it was not going to take orders from anyone uh, except uh, Pol Pot, whom he later, of course, as we know, uh, was instrumental in, uh, smashing, uh, him, in, in smashing himself. Now, by autonomous, I really meant that these, that as far as I know from information that I gathered when I was writing my book, uh, that the defendant was given considerable freedom of action about how to proceed. People were saying, did he invent the six copy policy? Did he uh, uh, invent this uh, policy of uh, consolidating uh, the psyche about the strings of traders? Uh, I think probably, probably did. This is part of his efficient operation. Uh, but I don't think there was too much day-to-day -day supervision by outside authorities. And I don't think evidence has come forth that Sun Sen, Sun Sen his supervisor through 77, uh, consulted with him on a daily basis or even a weekly basis. This is what I meant by autonomous. Uh, I'm not sure there was other questions I may have missed, uh, but as I say, I cannot speak about the prisons in the independent zone if that was controlled by the uh, party center. That's a piece of information I had not known before, uh, and I know very little about these these prisons or this prison, whichever was involved, and I'm not sure the documents have come down to us about them to say how they functioned. If they have, they certainly were not in my view when I was doing my work. Council, thank you, Question. Mr. Professor. I would merci, like to Monsieur put Chandler. another question to you. Through your testimony this morning, you said that uh, there were conflicts between the Cambodian and the Vietnamese soldiers. Their conflicts were not publicized. I would like to ask you to which document uh, you based uh, your argument that such uh, conflicts were not publicized? Uh, well, if something was not publicized, I can't base my decision, my statement on a document. I mean, it's the absence of documents that suggests the thing wasn't publicized. This is through 1977. You had uh, Trump and radio was broadcasting, Vietnamese radio was broadcasting. Uh, these broadcasts were monitored and published by uh, the BBC and by the United States. Not a mention of this was happening, uh, and it's, that's where I drew my, my evidence that there was not being publicized. The publicity began in 1978 after the breakdown of uh, diplomatic relations with Vietnam, after Vietnam's attack uh, into Cambodia in late 1977, which was not publicized by either party uh, until they withdrew in January 78, uh, and then the, uh, the, the uh, Khmer uh, declared a, 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 a great victory over the uh, Vietnamese at that time. Now, there were certainly, these conflicts were publicized after the war broke out in the open in 1978, but they were not publicized in 1977, which is the period I was talking about. Uh, on ne rendait pas public ces conflits um, entre le Vietnam et le Council. Cambodge en 1977. Et c'est ce, cette période qui, fait qui a fait l'objet uh, de mes travaux like de recherche également. To put another question. question. You said that the archive of S21 is a special archive compared to S21 other archives of other security offices. Tout à fait unique. Uh, comparé à d'autres centres de sécurité. Puis-je vous demander whether you have access si vous avez to eu accès all the archives of other security offices before you could conclude that uh, the archive uh, at S21 is more detailed or peculiar uh, than the other 
security officers, could you please shed some light on this? The only archive for which I was aware of when I was writing the book was the one from the southwestern prison, which was uh, sizable but by nowhere means uh, as sizable as a surviving archive from S21. Uh, I was able to say that this as a surviving archive was extremely large and larger as indeed it was than any other archives that had survived that I was aware of. Now, I don't think archives have survived. I may, be missing, I may not know this, I may be wrong, but I don't think extensive archives have survived from the provincial prisons, archives of the extent of the archive discovered at S21, which not only included uh, over 4,000 confessions, but hundreds of pages of administrative documents, uh, uh, rosters of prisoners, lists of executions, uh, study, study uh, session documents, self-criticism materials. Uh, this is a massive, uh, massive document uh, archive, as any visitor to uh, DC CAM can see. And I don't think, and I, I, I'd be welcome to withdraw this if I can find evidence that there's any archive anywhere near as large that has been cited by anybody in Cambodia uh, since there may have been archives as large as this that have disappeared. I have no way of knowing that. Council, thank you, Professor. According to your research, and studies in relation to the matters at S21. Did you know that Deutsch had the authority to make an arrest of anyone to be sent to S21? I don't think he did have that authority. The arrests were made when people were sent, uh, sent to him. As far as I'm aware, he didn't have authority to, to make arrests in the countryside. He may well have been able, in a position to send names to uh, figures in the countryside for them to decide whether a person should be arrested or not. But to my knowledge, and I think he could probably uh, amplify this himself in a statement, I don't, or, or contradict it, uh, I don't think he had authority to arrest. And I think that was not an authority that he sought uh, that I'm aware of either. Council, thank you, Professor. Could you please clarify for us, according to your research, uh, did you ever find that uh, the accused ever ordered, ordered any detainee uh, be smashed without any superior order to him first? Well, for one thing, uh, the answer to your question is we, we have none of the surviving superior orders. If, when and if they existed, they have not survived. It would make the work of this uh, tribunal a lot easier if we had uh, please smash signed Paul Park. We have nothing like, nothing like that that survived. Uh, I think the mandate that the defendant had at S21 was to see to it that everyone who came into that prison uh, left it for execution. That was his mandate. That was never withdrawn by higher authority. And therefore, I don't think he had to seek higher authority to supervise a system in which he had no choice about who got killed and who didn't. Everybody got killed, no matter what they'd done or, or who they were. So it was not a question of seeking higher authority on individual bases. I think um, where, quel que soit la and here again, I may be, may be wrong, because I, of course, was not present at the time. I think where he sought higher authority for certain activities was when higher authority was interested, or particularly interested, in a given prisoner. 
So he would want to know from Sansen particularly how should this particular prisoner be treated? What questions should he be asked? Uh, should, uh, and so on. And these dialogues, of course, have not survived, but this would be the places where he would have sought authority. But it would never have been authority to kill the person. That went without saying. Everybody went in there from the smallest child to the highest member of the Communist Party had the same fate. Thank you, Professor. I would like to proceed with another question. question this morning you indicated that at that time, the time when the accused was still the chairman, he did not say or write that he was not satisfied with his work. And there was, although he was not happy, but he did not there write such things. And if he did so, he could have signalé, uh, been suicidal si already. Fait, il, été, un petit peu comme so, une, my question is, do you still stand by your comment, uh, your statement made this cette déclaration? Uh, certainly, I don't see any reason to... I haven't seen anything since this morning that would cause me to change my mind. Depuis ce matin, je n'ai rien vu qui tende à m'amener à changer d'avis là-dessus. Question. Thank you, Je vous professor, for shedding some Monsieur light Chandler on this, and uh, thank you also, point. Mr. President. I have Je no further questions, aussi, but I would like to share the floor with my colleague. Council, um, Mr. Maître Roux, Roux, the President, you take à prendre the floor. la parole, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Maître Roux, je vous en prie. Merci, Monsieur le Mr. Roux. Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Bon après-midi, Monsieur Chandler. Good afternoon, Professor Chandler. Merci de votre patience. Thank you for your devant patience. ce feu roulant de questions. J'ai encore quelques questions, questions à vous poser. I have a few more to put Et d'abord, vous dire que je vous remercie vivement like d'être venu jusqu'à cette barre. To you for to this court. Votre témoignage est d'une importance capitale pour your la manifestation de la vérité. Is for the of the truth. Ma, ma première question sera un peu générale. My first question would be à partir du titre general, français de votre livre, S21, which is S21 ou le crime impuni des Khmer Rouges. The unpunished crimes of the Khmer Rouge, Vous êtes aujourd'hui témoin Today, devant ce tribunal you à vocation a internationale, before this international tribunal, ce tribunal qui mène le premier procès des Khmer Rouges. This is the court that is conducting the first trial of Alors, the Khmer euh, Rouge. Monsieur Chandler, est-ce que vous pensez que ce procès Chandler, va pouvoir servir l'histoire Do you think that this trial will be of service to history uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, it's probably the largest one that's been asked me today, and I've been asked some pretty large questions. Uh, the easiest answer is there's no way of telling, but I'm not going to say that answer. I think the trial, at least as it's developed so far, and so far as I've been in touch with reading about it and so on, uh, has a use by confronting the defendant, and I hope on confronting uh, subsequent defendants with some evidence that they will be in a position to 
certaines des éléments de preuve, uh, accept or deny, être, donc, uh, and that this rejeté, confrontation is one that qui, has never happened with the Khmer Rouge. Chose qui est sans they did what they did. Dans des Khmer Rouge. Ils ont fait ce they ont walked fait. away from it. Ils, and now um, the higher, not partis. the current defendant, but the higher uh, brothers, the ones who are still alive, et say they had nothing to do with anything that et certains des autres frères dirigeants Khmer Rouge qui sont toujours en vie disent qu'ils n'avaient absolument rien à voir avec tout ça et je pense qu'il est important que les accusés soient to the truth of what happened when they had positions of power uh, to question that evidence if it's Il faut unreliable or false and to allow the Cambodian people, at least some of them, to have some awareness of what had Cambodian happened in a scale wider than the horrific stories anybody in this room il faut dire cette can pick up from any Cambodian person over 40, et, uh, except, of course, those over 40 who played an active role ans, in the Khmer Rouge administration. Avec les personnes Khmer Rouge qui, les membres des Khmer Rouge qui ont joué un rôle actif dans l'administration de ce régime. Merci et ma question complémentaire. Thank you. And a follow-up question to that. Personne depuis ce matin dans ce prétoire Since this personne n'a évoqué le fait no que l'accusé plaide coupable et reconnaît sa responsabilité. And admits Vous his qui avez travaillé longtemps sur S21 Having worked for a long que vous time que le fait on pour S21, do you consider sa that the accused's histoire? recognition of his responsibility is of service to history? That's an easy question. I think yes, indeed. Oui, là, I think it's a, facile, je le crois, I was extremely uh, moved and impressed très ému et très by that admission of responsibility, which seems to me pretty close to unique in survivors of that administration. Parmi les de ce gouvernement Khmer Rouge. Not surviving victims, surviving je parle pas des active, je parle active bien members. Des acteurs survivants du régime Khmer Rouge. Merci. Mr. Ho, thank you. Pour autant, nous essayons, et vous nous y aidez, However, we are trying, de comprendre par la confrontation, justement, by means of confrontation, as it quel so était happens, le degré de responsabilité de chacun. What was the degree of responsibility vous avez compris of aux questions involved. des procureurs, et aux questions des parties civiles, Based on the questions from the prosecution and the civil que malgré la reconnaissance des faits lawyers, de l'accusé, on essaye encore, j'allais dire, d'en rajouter, there is an attempt to et de, add more, on essaye de démontrer qu'il avait plus d'autonomie que ce qu'il dit. Alors vous pardonnerez à la défense, he, he à son did. tour, so you will forgive the defense de if, reprendre dans votre turn, livre it ce qui nous paraît looks, delves into your book exprimer la réalité de ce qui s'est passé. Je veux reprendre juste quelques points I am just going to dwell on et a notamment of points. la chaîne, je dirais, de commandement, la place à laquelle In était chain of and position Vous dites dans la version française chain. de votre livre, In the French version of your book, paragraphe 37, paragraph 37 premier paragraphe, says Mr. en parlant Hope, de Son Sen, In reference to Son Sen, ces nouvelles responsabilités you say Incluait celle du Santébal. Son Sen le dirigea de très près. Il lisait 
et annoté de nombreux aveux. Il dirigea également des sessions d'études pour les cadres de S21, au cours desquelles il discutait de ses objectifs, des interrogatoires et de l'usage de la torture. Au deuxième paragraphe de cette même page, vous ajoutez de nombreux documents communiqués par S21 au centre du parti passé entre les mains de Son Sen. On a retrouvé des dizaines de notes que Duc lui avait adressées ainsi qu'une grande partie de ses réponses. Elles indiquent l'attention caractéristique d'un enseignant aux détails et, aux zèles et, pardon, et un zèle révolutionnaire indéfectible. Yuniat, sa femme, Également ancienne enseignante, travaillait beaucoup avec lui et avait aussi accès à certaines dépositions. Seulement, votre commentaire, si vous en avez, sur ces passages de votre livre, est-ce que ici vous pouvez confirmer que Duc était bien le subordonné de Sun Sen et que Sun Sen avait la haute main sur le Santébal. Certainly, that was true. I never meant to say that the defendant had complete autonomy in his activities. He was certainly under under Sun Sen. I don't think Sun Sen. The number of confessions that we have his annotations on is quite small compared to the number we have uh, uh, the defendant's uh, annotations on. I think the defendant was careful to send things to Son Sen when there was matters of confusion or a certain importance in the prisoner. But yes, to answer your question, the answer is of course. I mean, uh, this was not a, uh, a, a, a rogue operation. This was a operation following a uh, distinct command. But as the previous, one of the previous questions suggested, it looks as if in the kind of chaotic way that uh, DK often operated, that uh, Tamok, higher than Son Sen, had genuine autonomy in the southwest and was not. Son Sen, although supposedly in charge of prisoners there, prisons there, uh, was not in a position and probably was unwilling in any case to uh, take over those operations. So, yeah, te your, the answer to your question, of course, is yes, but I mean, there's, there's give and take around uh, at, at, at other points. De flexibilité autour de cette question. Oui, tout à fait. Mr. Et, euh, plusieurs euh, yes, de mes confrères so. ont fait ré référence euh, aux déclarations à cette barre de M. Etchison, Etchison qui était moins mesuré que vous, il faut bien dire, et j'avais regretté qu'il se présente comme expert, tandis qu'il appartient au bureau des coprocureurs. Mais il avait, dit, euh, il avait cité cette marge de manœuvre en disant qu'elle faisait partie euh, de la ligne du PCK. Et il nous avait rappelé que les statuts du Parti communiste du Kampuchea euh, demandaient à ces cadres de faire preuve d'innovation. Euh, effectivement, euh, quand on se reporte à l'article 4 de ces statuts, il est sur, intitulé « La ferme position révolutionnaire dans la décision, la direction et le travail du parti ». Il est indiqué « Il faut posséder la notion et l'attitude de gestion du travail proche des masses au sein du syndicat » de la coopérative et de l'armée révolutionnaire et avoir l'initiative de créativité autonome. 
et avoir le dynamisme et l'intensification bouillonnante continuelle. Donc, est-ce que quand, quand vous parlez vous-même d'enthousiasme de doute, et on, peut, on ne peut que vous suivre, est-ce qu'il n'était pas aussi, avec cet enthousiasme, dans la ligne du parti Oh, certainly. This, uh, it wasn't just that it was part of the party line. It was a, it was a part of the party line that uh, the defendant uh, had absolutely no no trouble accepting. It suited his own uh, inclinations and his own abilities, and uh, he was a revolutionary party person. There was no way that they you could have deviated as, from the party line and still retain his revolutionary authenticity. So, sure, I mean, it was, he was doing not only what was expected, but what he wanted to do. They, they coincided because you're not independent from the party. You, are, you and the party are, are one force. Alors, pour autant, est-ce que ça excluait qu'il soit lui-même à un moment donné inquiet, voire terrorisé. Vous avez rappelé, c'est à la page 66 de votre livre, ce changement inaugura le règne absolu de la terreur qui se maintint jusqu'à l'effondrement du Kampuchea démocratique. Si on se rappelle que le prédécesseur de Duc, Nat, a fini à S21, si on se rappelle que Von Vett, un de ses anciens supérieurs, a fini à S21, quand Duc dit j'ai été à la fois acteur et otage de ce régime. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui vous paraît cohérent et Il dit j'ai été acteur et otage de ce régime criminel. Et il rappelle qu'il assume ses responsabilités. On essaie juste d'expliciter comment ça a fonctionné. Merci. Not only has a right to do what he has chosen to do, and, and I, I, I admire him for that, that he was the hostage and an actor of a criminal regime. I think, just from the documents that I've studied, I think the awareness that the regime was a criminal regime did not uh, came in 1978. This period when he has said that he began to get disillusioned, his friends and patrons were coming into the prison, he just couldn't see the point of it all. I think it's all very authentic, uh, what was happening. But I think we can't, uh, and he was also frightened because the final machine gun bursts, if you like, of the, of the regime seemed extremely arbitrary. There's quite a lot of evidence that uh, had the Vietnamese not invaded, that Son Sen himself would have come under the gun. Uh, generalized fear, I think, was everywhere by that stage. Uh, the statements of Pol Pot, uh, insofar as they've been recorded, made absolutely no sense, no sense whatsoever. Uh, he felt that he was uh, being attacked by members of the Warsaw Pact, uh, etc. So, in these closing months, maybe the closing six months, I'm not sure, uh, I think you have a, a documented series of regrets on the part of, uh, of the defendant. Uh, these did not extend to his, and I'm not being accusatory here, and I'm not, I know I'm getting outside the frame of the, of the uh, tribunal, but the, these regrets did not, did not extend to his deserting the movement uh, in 1979 or 1980. 
he stayed with the, with 60, the movement. He was still, like, I guess, uh, considered himself to be a revolutionary. But of course, he'd been frightened at this period. And this is also consistent with uh, just making sense of what was going on. Merci. Mr. Wood, thank you. Vous, vous évoquez en fait dans votre you, réponse un autre aspect que vous avez développé ce matin, uh, sur lequel vous insistez morning, plus encore dans, and, dans votre livre, uh, c'est la paranoïa qui avait atteint visiblement paranoia. les leaders. Uh, paranoia which had in also uh, reached the leaders apparently. Je vois la page and I can 98, see on page 99 de votre livre, of your book toujours édition française, in the French version, à la lettre les ordres du centre, Duc et ses collègues sapèrent la force militaire du Cambodge, and their colleagues démantelèrent sa structure administrative, broke up même le parti, la machine meurtrière de S21 n'avait pas de frein, la paranoïa des du Kampuchea démocratique ne connaissait pas de limites. Vous ajoutez effectivement à la page 134, comme je l'ai suggéré plus haut, les aveux extorqués à S21 servait aussi un objectif psychologique en objectivant les délires paranoïaques des dirigeants du Kampuchea démocratique. Avez-vous juste un commentaire ou est-ce suffisant avec ce que vous avez dit ce matin Paranoïa began at the center and spread down through the, through the ranks. I think uh, I'm trying to work my way through the rest of your question. Um, certainly, I would stand by my uh, comment that the machinery of, S, of, of uh, DK didn't have any... Uh, well, it had breaks in the sense that when the regime decided very belatedly to establish diplomatic relations with several countries uh, to give a generalized amnesty to the population, which uh, none of the population heard about uh, when they decided to slow down the rate of uh, intake into S21 while they were engaged in a full-scale war against Vietnam, which must have been, I think, for the Cambodians, really quite terrifying if they had thought for a second of what they'd uh, taken on, the most experienced combat army in Asia with a population of 70 million people. Uh, in this whole atmosphere of uh, 19... 78, I think there is a sort of an attempt to slow down some uh, of the, the to, to, no, no, to diminish the extent of the cruelties and activities uh, which the regime was noted for uh, and to try and balance the boat as it were as it was heading for a uh, disaster. But, The paranoia of the Mais leadership la des uh, continued to have no bounds because a if a indeed pour autant, the most dangerous enemies were those that were invisible, et si le plus était invisible it could never stop y a pas de because you can't fin. see them uh, and they're out there ennemis. trying to get you. So, là, Uh, this is kind of, uh, kind of a, a ragged answer to your good question, but voilà, this I can do at the moment. Merci beaucoup. Un autre sujet que vous avez abordé, notamment avec Mme la juge Calright, c'est la question de la politique du secret well, liée à recours à S21, mais aussi d'une manière générale. Was raining at S21, but also sur S21, euh, 
à la page 34 de votre livre, vous rappelez que les gardiens n'avaient pas le droit de suivre les interrogateurs dans les pièces réservées aux interrogatoires ou d'ouvrir les fenêtres pour regarder les ennemis interrogés. Et je crois me souvenir que dans d'autres passages, vous rappelez que les interrogateurs n'avaient pas le droit de parler entre eux. Plus généralement, à la page 31, vous dites ceci, le pays entier est vite devenu un environnement scellé, isolé du monde extérieur. Les responsables de S21 étaient eux-mêmes sous la surveillance du centre du parti tenu également secret et en tant que membre d'un régime indépendant, ils travaillaient sous la règle de la discipline militaire. Et au paragraphe And suivant, là où vous parlez de l'institution totale, on en a parlé ce matin, vous rajoutez que la mission de S21 était de protéger le centre du parti. Des commentaires supplémentaires you, sur uh, any, la politique du secret, uh, d'une manière générale ou en particulier S21 speaking, or particularly in reference to S21 uh, Not really. I mean, non, I non, think non. it was pretty clear to the defendant that Secrecy was the hallmark of the entire regime. There was no uh, point or no opportunity to, to take issue with that policy. Uh, and uh, as we said earlier, uh, one of the tragic outcomes of that was that uh, uh, no matter what people had done or no matter why they'd been arrested, or no matter how old they were or how young they were, uh, everybody who went Everybody who went in the gates of that prison was killed, I think, to a large extent to keep the existence of the prison from being known uh, outside its walls. Uh, this is why the guards themselves weren't allowed uh, to go home or whatever to take any vacations and so on. Um, I think the, 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 the secrecy got uh, really completely out of hand, but then <laughs> so did everything else. I mean, this is, everything was going out of hand at the same time. Uh, as the place was coming apart, the enemies multiplied, the paranoia intensified, uh, the prophecies became self-fulfilling uh, because if so many guilty people, now Tawasis and Cambodian, were pouring into S21, well then surely the extent of genuine conspiracies was enormous, Alors, uh, and surely uh, you just had to keep uh, keep going, and uh, the secrecy uh, aspect was never withdrawn, as I said, I think this morning, uh, Nguyen Chia, in one of the rare uh, frank interviews that he was able to give, because he gave it to a sympathetic Danish delegation, said that secrecy was absolutely, the exact word is in my book, I can't remember was exactly crucial or central to everything the party did, and that secrecy was, if you like, the logo or the motto of the CPK. Merci Mr. Hu, thank you very much. Avant de d'aborder mes dernières questions, je voulais juste vous dire, M. Chandler, je regrette que les coprocureurs et même les avocats de la partie civile ne vous aient pas alerté sur les difficultés de preuve qu'il y a dans le dossier, qui n'est pas fondamentale. Par rapport à ce que vous dites à la page 40 de votre ouvrage sur le plan ultime, alors nous n'avons pas le temps, euh, si, le, si Monsieur le Président tout à l'heure m'accorde un peu plus de temps, on projettera à l'écran 
le document qu'ont produit initialement les coprocureurs, ils avaient indiqué initialement que ce document correspondait à ce que vous appelez dans votre livre le plan ultime. Et ensuite, les coprocureurs ont retiré cette demande en disant, enfin, ils n'ont pas dit on s'est trompé, mais ils disent effectivement ça n'est pas. Le document écrit par Duke, il s'agit en réalité du carnet de Pond. Et Duke confirme d'ailleurs en disant que son écriture et celle de Pond se ressemblent. C'est juste pour que vous ne repartiez pas sans que quelqu'un vous ait au moins informé qu'il y a eu cette question dans le dossier. Ce n'est pas mon travail, ça aurait été le rôle des procureurs de vous informer. Ils n'ont pas cru devoir le faire. Alors j'aborde ma part ce semblaire qui me paraît, comment dire, l'apport fondamental de votre livre à notre réflexion et à ces débats. Vous avez eu le courage, dans le dernier chapitre de votre livre, d'aborder la question de ce que vous appelez le crime d'obéissance. Et en ce qui me concerne, c'est le sujet qui m'intéresse d'essayer de comprendre. Pourriez-vous en quelques mots, M. Chandler, expliquer à la Cour ce qu'a été qu'on appelle l'expérience de Milgram, dont personne ne vous a parlé Milgram, depuis ce matin, je le regrette. Uh, that, uh, about this morning, and quite regretfully. Certainly, uh... Oui, volontiers. L'expérience de Milgram a eu lieu à New Haven, Connecticut, dans les années 60. De quoi s'agissait-il on a, demandé, on a publié une annonce dans les journaux, demandé volontaire, euh, je devais payer à l'époque 10 dollars pour ce faire. Et ce que les volontaires devaient faire, c'était sous la direction d'un psychologue, un homme en tablier blanc, euh, se mettre à un tableau avec des boutons, une console électrique, et demander à, et poser des questions. Des question grammaticale à une personne qui se trouvait censément de l'autre côté du mur. Le président interrompt. The president, uh Can the AV unit uh, please assist uh, Mr. David Chen uh, with his uh, mic? Could you please repeat your final statement because uh, it appears that uh, the mic was not on and that uh, your statement uh, could not be uh, registered in the transcript? Uh, the defense uh, counsel, could you please uh, repeat your question and that uh, Mr. David Chandler, could you also ensuite, please uh, repeat your statement? Vous également répéter votre déclaration. Mr. Roux, thank you very much, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Pour les besoins thank du transcript, you, donc, Mr. Monsieur Therefore, Chandler, vous parlez dans votre livre de l'expérience de well, Milgram. Pourriez-vous en dire quelques mots so à la Chambre Je vous remercie. The Milgram experiment, is that coming through Est-ce qu'on entend l'accueil française okay were conducted by an uh, academic Milgram psychologist named Stanley Milgram. Par, uh, uh, des and what was involved was uh, getting volunteers through an advertisement in a newspaper par une dans les to come and participate in a psychological experiment for which they'd be paid a small sum of money. Leur a donné un peu uh, university students were not allowed to uh, les pas participate. À à cette uh, and what was involved was the Et Volunteers were asked to sit at a console with various buttons on it while the T 
teacher or psychologist, a man in a white coat who was in charge of the, of the psychological experiment, an authority figure, if you like, asked questions to a person who was supposedly on the other side of a wall facing the console, in other words, a wall right in front of me, for example. And when the and that person had to press a button, yes or no, to these questions. And whenever the person on the other side of the wall gave a wrong answer, the volunteer was supposed to press one of the buttons in front of him and administer a very mild electric shock to, if you like, punish or, or, or clarify the mind of the person on the side of the wall. Now, the whole thing was a setup, I'll explain why. The answers of the person behind the wall became increasingly wrong, and so the director or psychologist uh, asked the volunteers to increase the voltage on the electric charge uh, that was being administered to the person on the other side of the wall. Uh, these increases in voltage went past a series of flashing lights marked uh, danger, uh, do not go for and the, but the psychi psychologist told the volunteer, never mind, it's okay, it's not going to happen. On the other side of the wall could be heard shouts, screams of pain, pounding on the wall to stop. And the point was of the experiment, and I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, that 70% of the volunteers proceeded to obey the commands to increase the voltage past the danger system, which uh, the board said, uh, do not go past this thing, but which the psychologist said, it's okay, never mind, despite the cries and, and yells on the other side. Now, the people on the other side of the wall had no access to electric shocks. They were actors. Nothing was happening to them. However, the question, they were programmed to increasingly give incorrect answers to the questions so that on the, my side of the wall, if you like, the voltage would keep increasing. Now, it was an extraordinary experiment. It was refined several times. Uh, Milgram changed the location, changed the participants, and found over the years that, over the year or two that he conducted this experiment, it was always pretty close to 60% of the volunteers sometimes changed in terms of, of, of their uh, social position and so on, that followed the voltage right past the danger limit. Uh, the American Sociological Association, when these results were published, had an extraordinary meeting, or just a, a meeting, where they said experiments of this kind cannot be conducted ever again by a sociologist. These are too harmful to the, they thought, too harmful to the psyches of the, of the volunteers. But the findings of, the, Milgram's findings have never been questioned for accuracy. Uh, there have been similar experiments, uh, not quite similar, but much uh, experiments on obedience have been carried out by other psychologists elsewhere, and it's stood up enormously, this particular experiment. And it seems to me that this gets very close to the culture, not just of S21, but the culture of uh, democratic Kampuchea, where the people who gave the orders were accustomed to giving them. The people who received the orders were accustomed to obeying. There was no culture of, there very little culture in Cambodia of questioning commands by someone who is in authority. In other words, uh, questioning a military leader, a teacher, and so on. So I just used that experiment to show how, in a situation like uh, S21, uh, 
obedience plays into the horror of it all. You also find it played into the uh, horrors of the so-called ordinary men that Christopher Browning dealt with who it were assassinating and this is shooting uh, thousands of uh, Jews in Poland in 1941 and 42. But, and I brought it up at the last part of my book because I don't think it explains everything, but I think it's useful to see to what extent people, I guess like us, I can say, because these volunteers were not uh, criminals in any sense, how they, we have built into us a sense of, well, if the man in charge says it's okay, it must be okay. Uh, and this, of course, is a, feeds into the whole culture of DKNS 21 in ways that I can't go into now, but it would seem to be fairly clear. Monsieur Mr. Roux. Chandler, je vous remercie Mr. beaucoup Chandler, pour uh, thank you very much ces explications. Avant vous, vous le savez bien, Anna Arendt s'est essayée à comprendre. Also tried Elle a été très critiquée. Comprendre ne veut pas dire justifier. So, to understand does not mean to comprendre accept. veut to seulement understand dire only tenter means de comprendre. Et vous And, um, rappelez Effectivement, you dans votre livre, à la page 185, ce que dit euh, notre euh, chercheur Zygmunt Bauman, Zygmunt Bauman l'information la plus effrayante uh, tirée de l'Holocauste et de ce que nous avons Holocaust appris de ses auteurs n'était pas la probabilité que cela pouvait nous être fait. Mais l'idée que nous that we puissions could le faire. Do it to Et euh, And, um, Monsieur Chandler, Mr. on vous a Chandler, lu tout à l'heure, we... Madame le Bâtonnier, the judge said to you today, vous a lu uh, le dernier paragraphe de votre livre, mais pas la dernière phrase. But not the last sentence, however. Un temps, j'avais pensé ne vous poser que cette seule question. Parce qu'il me semble que c'est la question fondamentale. Fundamental question, in fact. Vous concluez ce dernier paragraphe par cette phrase pour trouver la source du mal mis en œuvre chaque jour à S21, nous ne devons finalement pas regarder plus loin que nous-mêmes. C'est bien ce que vous venez de nous dire. Réponse. I stand by that last sentence. Non, je dire uh, je it was not cette written uh, in or for a judicial proceeding. I still feel that uh, uh, our capacity to uh, commit evil is, I think, greater than our capacity to commit good, because, as Bauman uh, points out in another, in another state, that uh, we're socialized into bad behavior. Et we're not socialized into good behavior. Good behavior is rebellious. Basically, I mean, you're, you're, taking, you're going against the grain. So I stand by that sentence that this is not, of course, I use the word evil there. Uh, it does not exculpate people who do evil things because everyone else is capable of them. Because if so, you know, if we're all capable of killing people, then we should all go to jail. But that maybe only one person has killed someone in a trial situation. But I certainly didn't want to uh, get this. I wanted to avoid, and I was, I was uh, angered by. No, it's too strong. It's too strong, too boastful. Uh, I didn't like people saying, "Look at those evil people over there." You know, uh, we would. Oh no, you know, we would never. Well, who knows? Who knows what you do if you're in that situation? Uh, that doesn't mean that the people in that situation behave in any sense a commendable fashion. But I think uh, holier than thou or, or, or 
better than others is one of the least admirable human characteristics. C'est tout ce que je voulais dire. Merci, M. Chandler. Chandler. Et je vous confirme qu'effectivement, Duke reconnaît les crimes Duke auxquels il a participé à S21. Uh, je vous remercie. Et il présente ses remords sincères And aux victimes. He, uh, is Microphone for the witness, please. File a francophone, but this French edition of my book is an invented title. I did not call my book the unfinished crimes of the Khmer Rouge. That is never a phrase I would have used. But worse than that, from an academic point of view, all the notes were removed by the French editors in order to make room for explanatory prefaces and an explanatory postface written by two French scholars. You see who can then make this book edible to the Anglo-Saxon fearing uh, French public, it was enraging because this book needs its notes, and I think lots of the comments today have come from the notes, but they felt that the only way they could market this book is by making it you know, a sort of francophone sandwich with me in the middle and these two other guys. One of them, François Bizot, wrote a very gracious preface, but absolutely, I just want to make that point of the French edition because it's not the edition that I would ever use to cite. I mean, you had to yourself. But don't cite it in the future without the notes. Okay, that's all I have to separate comment. Besoin de notes, d'annotations, de pied de page, de références, de recherches. Mais pour les besoins de l'édition française, on a cru bon d'y ajouter les conclusions, les travaux, les remarques de deux chercheurs français. Voilà, c'est ce qui s'est passé. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Monsieur le Chancelier. The President, I notice the co-prosecutor is on his feet. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was going to raise this matter after the accused uh, made his observations, if he was planning to do so. But uh, we would like, and perhaps it's a good point to raise it now, because he, he may want to comment on it. We would like to put before the Chamber uh, the last plan, as referred to, in um, débat, Mr. Chandler's book, plan. and it's, the number is E5 slash 2.29 English 0023 and the Khmer 0028 5361 and the French 0031-4947-0031-4973. Your Honours have heard a description of the, the last joint plan through the testimony, so I won't describe it again. Um, I just wanted to, for the record, to note that the, the comments by the, uh, by the defence, my learned friend, were a little bit tiresome in terms of the prosecution somehow being underhand in not raising the issue of the document. As Your Honours uh, are uh, very much aware, we're on strict time constraints in questioning, and we have to choose carefully um, what we need to put to a witness. But in any event, um, this was going to be raised today. The witness today, the professor, believed that the document that he saw, the last joint plan, was in fact written by Doig, or he saw one a text written by the accused. However, as Your Honours are aware, uh, in our filing on the, the 16th of March, we state that after an analysis of the document, looking at the handwriting of the accused in the prosecution office, it appears that the handwriting is in fact 
of a senior interrogator upon. Um, and I'm, I believe I'm getting a nod from the defence that uh, that may well be the case. So, regardless of that particular issue, it's an S21 document produced by the interrogation office there, and uh, it's significantly relevant because it brings together, as the uh, professor has said, uh, the, all of the information for the last two years that seemed relevant to determine um, understand uh, the perceived enemies at, uh, in, during that period from the information they received. So we would like to put that forward into evidence. Uh, maybe the accused might be able to clarify that in his observations if he wanted to do that. But regardless, we would like to put that uh, before you rebondir sur la production de ce document, mais en tout cas, c'est ce que nous voulions euh, faire, Madame et Monsieur les juges. Pas de problème de la part de la défense pour que ce document soit versé, en rappelant qu'effectivement, il s'agit bien du document apparemment écrit par Pawn et pas par l'accusé lui-même. The president. Le president. Next, uh, the chamber would like to give the floor la to the accused la to make his observations in relation to this testimony of uh, Mr. David Chandler. David Chandler. If uh, the accused uh, would wish to Je do so, prie, the floor is yours. The accused. Mr. President, first, Monsieur le Président, I would like to make three observations, faire trois observations in relation to the testimony and the book of uh, Mr. David Chandler. David first, Chandler. I would like to express my thanks to your respect to Mr. David Chandler in relation to his observation regarding my work and in the relation to the missing of Mr. Toussamot. Sur la disparition de Mr. Toussamot. Regarding this point, I have not been clear Yet. Je ne sais pas trop pour and Mr. David Chandler est, appreciated Chandler uh, the work of me and I really also been grateful to him that uh, shows that he has a great virtue as the good researcher. De ses point number two, de I am also grateful point two, to Mr. David Chandler in relation to the pictures of dogs. Vis -a -vis de uh, David de Chandler said that chien. that was not the concept David of Chandler the Communist Party of Kimbo, uh, Cambodia. The photos uh, in relation to the pictures of the dogs uh, with uh, the head of Ho Chi Minh. Avec, uh, la tête, and la I tête think uh, this is a correct uh, observation. Là observation. And I knew for sure that exact. it was wrong to do that because I could not find uh, the picture of cela, Richard Nixon at that time. That's why I Nixon. Et, found um, another picture instead. So photographie I was the one who created de such a picture Et je suis la personne I could qui not était à l'origine de la création de cette image parce que je ne pouvais pas um, trouver de photographie 
And uh, de once Monsieur again, Nixon. I really appreciate uh, the work of Mr. David Chandler. La qualité du travail de Monsieur David Chandler. Also, Mr. David Chandler, ailleurs, Monsieur David Chandler wrote in his book my biography based livre, on the, con uh, the confession or by the statement by a person who he said uh, as my friend, but he lui, is not uh, my close friend at all. We have known each other, nous but nous they, connus, he was not my close friend. So far as I remember, and if I'm not Après mistaken, when pas, Mr. David Chandler asked uh, Nate Tyre to uh, David Chandler a demandé à Monsieur Ned Tire take uh, one of the book offered by the professor in that book in relation to Brother Number One, professor, and uh, the professor livre Brother Number asked One the, that Ned Tire quickly asked me for my biography, and I. Really appreciate uh, this kind of work, j'apprécie ce type. And that uh, he tried travaux. to seek the truth uh, based on his uh, research. La manifestation and de la vérité. Uh, for this reason, se fondant sur ses I travaux de recherche, very pour ces raisons, je lui suis très having seen the achievement of Mr. David Chandler when he wrote about the S21. And it is, of course, just a flower among the 100 flowers blossomed in the garden of uh, democracy uh, at the CPK correction. So, uh, Mr. David Chandler and Evan Gaffman and uh, another professor, uh, and I am very grateful to them and so to very proud of them when the judges asked me to respond to the work of Mr. David Chandler. I was at that time uh, experienced some kind of difficult situation because I was not, uh, uh, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, I, je ne connaissais pas I was not uh, that good uh, in responding uh, to him because I uh, had very little knowledge. And I wrote about the policy of the Democratic Cambodia sur la politique du Cambodia démocratique. And uh, the people of Cambodia. Et I wrote about the event ce, before the 17, du, du uh, 1976 Cambodian and after that. Uh, and also, I uh, ah, wrote about the treatment uh, of the Khmer Rouge uh, toward the people or the former officials of the regime before 1976. And after the 30th uh, of March, uh, 1976, and uh, I also wrote that I was moved and shocked uh, to learn that, that the, such crimes. And I wrote that uh, it was Et in my position as a member of the party du parti who would be accountable for the crimes uh, committed crime before the eyes of the nation. Devant and I also wrote about my uh, statement in relation to the Pol Pot concept. concept. I talked about Pol Potism, Pot not Maoism, because Pol Pot uh, used Car the Pol theory of the Gang of Four. Gang and I also quote the example Et that after the 17th of April, Chang Chun Chiu uh, hit uh, secretly in Cambodia. Um, so, in conclusion, my response to uh, Mr. David Chandler is not a very significant achievement of mine in such writing, but it is just a kind of piece of information to shed light on how 
uh, Cambodian de, people que écrit, uh, dans ce document que j'ai écrit have been une killed and uh, uh, de such tragedy manière, une telle tragédie a pu avoir lieu existed de and manière, I would not uh, like to add any further peuple, but I would uh, like to put uh, my response uh, with the president's link to the public uh, so that they can access to such document uh, que il faudrait I'm very grateful ce document de manière à ce que uh, le monde puisse savoir ce qu'il en est je vous remercie, Madame et Monsieur les juges. Uh, the president, the, president. Uh, the accused, could you please Monsieur rise vous and vous uh, could you please once again state uh, your uh, request that you would like to put uh, Exprimer votre demande your à confession in relation to the crimes, the three points. Vous you just mentioned, uh, have you already submitted this document into document? the case file or is it a new piece of document? 
un nouveau document. The accused, uh, Mr. President, uh, this document uh, was already given to the co-investigating judges. At the beginning, I wrote the document, uh, document based upon the order from the co-investigating judges, and I also gave my response. Des juges ou sur des juges this document uh, is under A98, du document A98, and it is in three languages, document the French, en langues, en langue Khmer, and English. En Khmer I wrote in Khmer, Khmer en and uh, Mr. David Chandler already Chandler stated and quoted the, the document. Thank you, Mr. President. Il a déjà parlé de ce document. Voilà, Monsieur le Président. The President, thank you. Please be seated. Uh, a... Merci, dit Monsieur le Président. Since dit le Président, document, uh, ce document. And as requested uh, by the international corporate to be put uh, before the chamber and that the defense council uh, did not object. Uh, so uh, the chamber would like to consider that this document now is put document, uh, before the chamber. However, the, the, another document uh, that the accused just mentioned uh, is already seen in the case file. And this morning, uh, Judge Sylvia Cartwright uh, already referred to such a document. Uh, so the chamber considers that uh, this document is already put uh, and debated before the chamber. Uh, we note that uh, Mr. Monsieur François Roux is on his feet. Maître Roux, je vous en prie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. Juste avant que vous Thank you, Mr. President. clôturiez l'audience, je voulais indiquer respectueusement à la Chambre que je ne serai pas présent la semaine prochaine et que c'est Maître Canizares qui me remplacera à cette barre. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. The President, since the session to hear the testimony of Professor David Chandler, Chandler comes to an end, et cette déposition touche à présent à sa fin. We will take the adjournment. Uh, the nous session will be resumed on the 10th of August. Août 2009. Then we are going to hear nous entendrons the testimonies of la the other witnesses. Des témoins. And uh, finally, the court is enfin, very grateful to la the attendance of Mr. David Chandler souhaite remercier who is here with us to give the testimony Témoigner. And uh, we note how also difficult also for you uh, who had uh, to respond to several questions regarding your questions portant the sur votre livre Voices from really S21. appreciate your kindness and patience and the court is now votre adjourned. Patience. The court Levé. Personal, security personnel are now instructed to take the accused back to the detention facility and call him back to the court on Monday, the 10th of August. Lundi, 10 août.